the Venetians are very good at psychological warfare as well. That if you read uh, Friedrich Schiller's Ghosts here, you can see that you what you do is you pretend to be people's friends. You find out what they want, what their weakness is, and you give it to them. If they want money, you give them money. If they want sex, you arrange for that. If they want drugs, you arrange for that. Whatever it is they want, their weaknesses, you feed them. And then you tell them, okay, I'm doing all this for you and I just need these little favors. And you corrupt them. And you corrupt them until you can control them. And of course, you know what they're doing so you can always blackmail them if they try to get out of line. But basically what controls them is the knowledge that if they don't go along with you, then they lose out on all these things they like. You know, if they play ball with you, then <clears throat> they become rich, they become famous, they have all of their desires sated, they get everything that they want, in a, but in a mental state which is increasingly depraved and subject to manipulation. And that's also the Venetian method, that you win by corruption. And that the, you, the thing that the empire fears most of all is an honest man who isn't corruptible because he doesn't want those things We can see the dynamics. The system has increased its level of Satanism generation to generation. More kink, more drugs, more violence, and identity confusion, sure. But I guess now the question would be, where do they get all these ideas and techniques from? How do they know so much about how we function? What makes us tick? and how to navigate these things down the path of their preconceived destruction of God's creation. It must have started somewhere. Well, though these ideas go all the way back to the garden and the tree of knowledge, we also see remnants in the Tower of Babel and efforts of Nimrod, in Plato, Nero, Machiavelli, Blavatsky, Bailey, and uh, numerous others. These ideas are old, but where were they put together in a modern format? When was the American blueprint to these ideas organized? Where? And by whom? The American formation of a cornerstone mind control program started with the concept of cybernetics. In 1941, at one specific group of private meetings in New York, the Macy Conferences,
So what's the story with the Macy Foundation? We could begin with its fortune in oil in the shipping industry, then its standard oil buyout of the Rockefeller family. The Macy Foundation became a Rockefeller financed um, Office of Strategic Services and CIA Mind Control Research Fund front organization. With the financing of this foundation, the birth of cybernetics and the future of all Project MK Ultra programs became a reality. By gathering the most prolific and influential minds of hard sciences or physical sciences and soft sciences or social sciences, the monostate culture evolution through biotech and social engineering was now appearing not only possible, but guaranteed in less time needed than expected. The Josiah Macy Jr. Foundation would be carried financially through the CIA to produce development, reproductive biology, family planning, or eugenics. This is the think tank that programs like Planned Parenthood and No Child Left Behind came from. The Macy Foundation also focused on grant making for medical research institutes and professional education, further building the social engineering and biological warfare spheres which comprise the elite matrix. To this very day, the Macy Foundation continues to thrive within the medical and technical development of society. The Macy conferences of the early 40s to the mid 50s formulated methods and models that have been implemented into all aspects of society, academia, military, medical, media and entertainment, politics and scientific research and development of every ilk. From cybernetics came the blueprint for transhumanism, the internet, mass psychology and mind control, predictive programming and media, false flag operations, color revolutions. The Macy conferences were a post-World War II mind control project, the coming together of physical and social sciences through the development of cybernetics, the beginning of the internet, and implications for the future of new systems of societal manipulation towards a controlled monostate. Though the foundation was CIA and Rockefeller funded, it is important to know it is solely a branch of the Tavistock Institute and SRI, the soft and hard scientific backbone of social engineering. Through research, we figured out that many MK Ultra programs came directly from the studies done at the Macy conferences. And at the helm of MK Ultra programming in America, we find the extensive work of British intelligence agent and scientist Gregory Bateson, one of the most influential members of the Macy conferences. The only other names that can come close to matching his influence is possibly Kurt Lewin and Bateson's mentor, Aljuas Huxley. Bateson contributed much to the success of MK Ultra by his drug and patients experimentation at the Menlo Park Veterans Hospital, where another key figure in the project and promotion of LSD through his acid testing gang, the Merry Pranksters, Ken Kesey was a test subject and a volunteer for the MKUltra projects. He is also the author of the covert MKUltra novel, One Who Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest.
Though many universities were utilized in the development of MKUltra and cybernetics, the core schools were UC Berkeley, Stanford, and Harvard. The University of Santa Cruz was also another key institute. In fact, Gary Bateson was a professor there, along with the director of research at Menlo Park. He also founded the Mind Control and Behavior Modification Lab in Palo Alto called the Mental Research Institute, or MRI. Here he ran clandestine MKUltra experiments with LSD, psilocybin, mescaline, and DMT. He gained funding through the CIA under the guise of schizophrenia studies in the family and um, parent-child dynamic research. These exact studies in congruence with those of the Frankfurt School were used to pinpoint specific features of dysfunction in the family and behavior, which would be promoted through drugs and media to produce similar effects within the society. This is why today we see drugs and alcohol or mood enhancing substances so accepted, advertised, and second nature within our media sources. To go further, Bateson is also the root source of NLP, or Neuro Linguistic Programming, another conditioning method of MKUltra, started by Bandler and Grinder, who are both students of Bateson. MLP can be viewed as the stepchild of the MKUltra human cybernetics programs, which come directly from the experiments held by Gregory Bateson. With the guidance of Aljus Huxley, funding and clearance of the CIA director Alan Dulles, it was made possible to create the drugged up technocratic smartphone monoculture we have today. Let's do a quick summary. After World War II came the merging of technology and human behavior, or cybernetics, through the Macy Conferences of New York. With the help of IBM, Henrik Hilmer's SS MK Ultra projects of Germany, Project Paperclip, which brought those programs to US soil, and the creation of the television, along with the OSS broadcasting stations like NBC, ABC, and CBS, um, from this point forward, say in the late 50s, the elite had fully developed their arsenal to produce a true monostate. Though they weren't finished, they needed a connective form of technology to foment a type of web that could simultaneously monitor, educate, distract, and mold the society. Through the research and development of groups like SRI, who created the internet, and actually designed uh, Walt Disney's Disneyland, um, NASA, and uh, the RAND Corporation, the personal computer was created and promoted through a cybernetic developed and drug influenced counterculture, which was formed by drugs, of course, uh, celebritism and music. Along with social propaganda to solidify an ideology and generation of people. A parallel example of this is our modern uh, rave culture or music festivals. They come directly out of the same programs that were used to create festivals like Woodstock, for instance. Um, so basically, yes, the computer, Silicon Valley, and the internet came directly out of the hippie movement, along with the military, uh, LSD, rebellion, and hatred for the status quo. In other words, the personal computer in Silicon Valley in general was kind of a rebellious act um, created by the counterculture. If they only knew those behind the status quo were also behind the development of the counterculture, the internet, and the computer technology in general. Just a big cultural experiment in mind control which sparked a world-changing industry all from cybernetics and originating in the Macy conferences. Also were the WHO um, conferences or World Health Organization along with the Ratio Club. Both were cybernetic organizations that held similar conferences as the Macy's. So I wonder why we don't learn about these conferences in school history or cybernetics in our science courses or Gregory Bateson in social studies. We might read Aljus Huxley's Brave New World or Kesey's One Who Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, yet never once do our teachers mention MKUltra or the role that these authors played in the programs. We never hear about Tavistock or names like Harold Amundsen, the uh, U.S. psychiatrist who in 1953 proposed to the CIA a study 
investigating the possible military application of LSD, which pretty much kicked the whole project off from the very beginning. Funded and structured through the Macy Foundation. See, these are pieces of history that we mustn't ever know. Otherwise, we would wake up, stop buying their garbage, and playing their stupid games and programs, participating in their events and festivals. Instead, use their technology for finding truth, for deprogramming and figuring out what this wicked place is really about and has been since the very beginning. CIA a total credit for sponsoring and initiating the entire consciousness movement counterculture events of the 1960s.